thankful for. If you guys want to put the uh, overhead on, we're going to talk about this book of Hebrews. We've been in the book of Hebrews for, for quite a, a time. And remember that the book of Hebrews was really written for the Jewish believers that had identified with the body, just like they're saying, we're going to identify with you. And then they kind of got caught up in some Judaism and some battles. And, and so um, remember how, how the writer, I believe it's Paul, but there's some question there maybe, but it says, God who at different times and in different manners and sundry times and in, in divers' manners, it says in the King James, in, spoke in time past. Then it says, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son. And, and then it goes on and it says, you know, he's spoken in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the world. That's Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Well, we've been preaching through Hebrews and now we're in chapter 11. Tim did a beautiful job sharing on, on some of the uh, portion of, of 11. I think we might get stuck in 11 here just a little bit, but... Um, I'm going to continue with, with 11. So many times it's referred to as the faith chapter. Faith that sets us free. Wow, I, I appreciated the songs and the things that were shared this morning in worship. And they were songs of faith. You know the song when we were singing holiness. Holiness, God, is what you long for. And then it says something about it's what you want from me. In my heart, I just felt I had to sing it's what you've placed within me. Because, you know, I can't produce holiness. It's what he's placed within me. And so we don't have to come with this thing of, of trying to attain. Because we'll never do it. We never are going to measure up within us. But what he's done is perfect righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, this, this chapter is a chapter of faith. And it's a statement of faith. So, if um, just so you know, there's a mic up here. And Viviana, are you in the back there? there? Is there a mic right there by you? Yep. Okay. A little bit later, we're going to turn those on. And this one's going to start right up here with Andy and Christina, not unless somebody else comes up and fills these rows. But you're all going to have an opportunity. The other mic's going to start in the back with Michael and Viviana. And that one's going to keep going and coming forward. This one is going to start here and work its way back. Now, you don't have to speak. You can just pass the mic on. But I would like you to be careful just about passing it on too, too freely because you're all going to have an opportunity to make a statement of faith. There's something about the speaking a word of faith. Let God speak to you about that. If you don't feel you have a word to share, it's okay. There's nobody's going to pressure you or nothing like that. So I want us to pause and pray and ask God, to speak to us this morning. Let's just bow our heads. Hmm. Yes. Thank you, Father. And by the Holy Spirit, may your will be done in every one of our hearts. And, and together, God, we just space, speak. Speak, Lord. We're, we're listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, faith that sets us free. Remember we, we were, uh, okay, now, I'm, oh, I, my thing isn't on. There we go. And you know what? I'm just wondering if these, this light does not come on. you want to just fix that for me? 
Thank you. Okay. And in the meantime, if, uh, well, I can just talk about these next slides, even if you don't have them. If you can advance to the next one, it says Hebrews 9, the blood that speaks better things. Thank you there, Steve. Better things. Remember what the blood of Jesus, there we go. You are a good man. Thank you, Mayor, Marianne. Okay. Um, yeah, the blood speaks better things. You know, we overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony, but it's first of all, it says, by the blood of the Lamb, and then the word of our testimony. The blood speaks better things. And nine deals with so much of that. Ten um, talks a little bit about that. We're going to reflect on that. But Hebrews 11 is a faith that sets us free. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that faith. You know, in, in Hebrews 10, there was a... There was a uh, There was a warning, and, and the warning in chapter 10 had to do with, we're not of those, it says in 10, we're not of those who draw back to fear and unbelief, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. You know, faith is not a feeling. Sometimes you feel it, and other times you don't. That there's something about that, the realization and the determ just the understanding and the declaring, I believe. I believe God. I believe. See, it says, not of those who draw back. And then it says in Hebrews 10, all, my, all the more, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more. Friends, I think we're in this day, so much the more as you see the day approach. We're in this time. This is a time that God's church broadly needs to rise up and be who he says we are. Friends, it's a, it's, it's a walking in faith. Now I really believe it's time when Christians walk who we say we are. That we rise up and just simply live Christ. What would Jesus do in this time of pandemic? In this time of the wave? What would Jesus do? Boy, friends. I, I just have a hard time. And I don't mean this critical in any way. I have a hard time believing somehow Jesus was walking around with a full mask and all of those things. But I'm not critical of those that are in a position and need to, to be careful. I'm not trying to do that in any way. I'm just saying, what would Jesus do? How would he live who he is? In fact, he would speak into the atmosphere. In Jesus' name, we have that authority to bind up whatever viruses, whatever sicknesses. He says you will do these things. How do we walk that? How do we walk that with power and authority and, and grace? Grace. Let's not neglect the meeting times, friends. If you're able, I encourage you to be here as some people. And I know there's some listening because we live stream and I bless you online. We want you to know there's no condemnation in this at all. Friends, some of you are, are being careful because you don't want to give the sickness or be a carrier to somebody else. I understand. And we bless you on that journey. You hear the Lord on how to walk. And there's not condemnation here. But you're welcome. But I do believe there's an importance of us meeting. And so if you're able, be here. And so much the more as we see these days approach. Well, that's the verses just prior to this chapter of faith. We don't want to let anything hinder the flow of the Holy Spirit. But we're not of those who draw back. We're not in fear and unbelief. But we're of those who believe. There is no fear. Because faith is what sets us free. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Now here's 11. Remember how it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
and for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen are, are made not of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith Enoch was taken away so he did not see death. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I would like us just to make that statement right from the beginning. I believe God is. Can we say that all together? I believe God is. I believe God is. I know him. He spoke to me. He lives within me by his spirit. I speak that by faith. I don't question that truth. I am created by him. God is. That's a very foundational part of faith. I know that we met with people here in our room here some time back, and I reflected on that, because they said they're nuns. They don't believe in nothing. No God, no demon, no hell, no heaven, nothing. But you know what? When they come into the room, and they're willing to meet, I say, okay, friends, you can believe whatever you want when you leave. But while we're here, and I said that, I said, I believe. And, I, and before they left, they met God. And they too confess Christ. That's by the Holy Spirit. These that said they're atheist nuns, nothing believed because they met him. See, friends, I believe he is. And whether you believe it or not, he is. <laughs> Just so we know. By faith, Noah was warned by faith Abraham and I'm going to speak more on Abraham by faith Abraham when he was called to go out you know if you remember who Abraham was you know of course by this time we've had Adam and Eve and then we went on through and and come up past Enoch and went to Noah and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord built the ark and now after the ark and it wasn't long before this group had settled in the land what was known as the Ur of Chaldees and they started building this Tower of Babel. And it was in that moon-worshipping place. And yet they were civilized in many ways. It, there was archaeology shows they had indoor plumbing and they had a lot of things happening. But now they're building this tower that's going to reach heaven. So they were starting to deny at least a surrender to God. And God then confused the languages and broke that thing apart. But... Abraham was out of that setting, and he hears God. Somehow, I believe every person that has ever been born has this thing within them, this longing. It's a, it's a void that only God can fill. And somehow, Abraham, I don't know, on his walk, out of that light, he heard. It says he obeyed. He, was, he had faith. He heard a word from God. And it says, when he was called, he, he was going to receive an inheritance. He went out, not knowing even where he was going to go. But by faith he dwelt in the land. It was by faith. He waited for a city which has a foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Faith. Sarah, you know, and I, I had to think of that because, man, I thought, Sarah, eh, she just didn't remind me of just this powerful woman of faith. But yet she believed. She believed. She's in the faith chapter. She did believe. Even though they were trying to help God in whatever ways they could do, giving her Abraham, the Hagar, the maid, and all those things, Sarah believed. By faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive and bore a child when she was past the age of conception. That's faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. He believed that if he killed his son, God would raise him. He just knew. He believed that the miracle had already happened. God can do it again. If God told me to do this, I'll do it. You know, it's a little bit like Job. When Job said, even if he slays me, yet I will trust him. Yeah, how do we walk that? I remember <laughs> I was in my 20s, I think, maybe 30s. 
Anyway, I, I just was a series. My wife says, I don't know if we ever had a house that you didn't fall off the roof on. <laughs> I haven't this one yet where we've lived. But I, I'm getting to an age those falls aren't as easy. But <clears throat> the, the, <clears throat> the one that, that took me in for a little ride, if they were to give me a little time, I'd have woke up, I think. But the one that I ended up in the hospital for a bit was when I was on the back of our house and we was just building it on on um, 131. Anyway, I was standing, it's like two stories there and, and it was just almost like concrete below, but I don't think the cement was poured yet. It was just, anyway, the, the scaffolding just broke loose and I just went backwards down and, and then the planking and stuff landed on me and I, my kidneys were bleeding for a while. And, and that happened and just before that happened, we was building the shed and the, the, it was rainy and I realized how not even good tennis shoes will hang on wet, wet metal. And uh, so I went down off of that one and that one wasn't bad. This last one, that next one was a little bit rough. And then it was sometime after that, we were swimming in Lake Michigan and got caught in the, kind of the undertow. And I really thought we were drowning. I mean, I drank a lot of Lake Michigan. and I can swim. <laughs> and my, the children were there, and Lily was trying to hide them. <laughs> she said she didn't want them to watch me drown. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> this was just a rabbit trail. I wasn't going to... No, but the thing that, that reminded me of that, <clears throat> because somebody asked me, those happened in a fairly close sequence. Somebody said, well, what do you think God is saying through that? And I felt he had spoken. I said, but you know, I'm not even sure what all he is. But I want you to know this. <laughs> even if he takes me, even if he's like, I'm going to trust him. By faith, Abraham was there. Faith that sets us free. See, when you, we have faith, it, something changed in my life because there was a time I wouldn't have been able to say that. I was afraid of death. But that's been gone for years. I don't fear dying. I believe there's an appointment someday. But if God has me here and I usher in that thousand years, I'm good with that. But whatever it is, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. See, in Romans 4, this is what really got a hold of me in this week early and the week, end of last week maybe. But Abraham, this is Romans now. Notice what it says about Abraham. Was humanly speaking the founder of our Jewish nation. Now Paul's writing to the church at Rome, made of both Jews and Greeks. But he said his, if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that wasn't God's way. See, friends, that's why when we sang that holiness is what you want from me, I, 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 I just think holiness is what you placed within me. It's who you made me to be. Because see, if it would be good deeds that makes us acceptable. Um, see, the scriptures say Abraham believed God. And it was counted him as righteousness because of his faith. He was declared righteous. When people work, their wages aren't a gift, but it's something they've earned. If you go to a job, and I remember that as a young man. My first job, I got paid $1.65 an hour. I was 16, worked for the farmer neighbor. And I worked hard, bailed hay and did whatever, $1.65. At the end of the week, I was looking for a check because I worked. Wasn't it? He would have said, here's a gift, and he gave me my check for whatever hours I worked at $1.60. I said, that's not a gift, my friend. I earned that. See, when we work, we expecting some kind of payment. But people aren't counted as righteous, but people are counted as righteous not because of their work, but because of their faith in God. That's what makes us righteous. It's a faith. It's not a work we can do. See, for by one offering, he perfect, this is in Hebrews 10 now, jumping back to Hebrews. By one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. That's us. I accept that by faith. See, he says, I'll put my laws in their hearts and in their minds, I'll write them. Then he adds, 
Their sins and their lawless deeds I'll remember no more. You know, we have a memory sometimes, or the enemy certainly has a way, the accuser brings them up over and over. But God said, I don't remember those. I'm not counting those sins. I don't keep a record of your wrongs. Why? Because by faith, I accepted the payment, Jesus Christ, our Lord. People are counted as righteous, not because of their works, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. Romans 4, verse 6. David spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who declared righteous without working for it. It's recorded in Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That we can accept by faith. David already spoke about that. How blessed the man is. It's recorded in Romans. Romans 4. It's tied into the sing of Abraham. Oh, what joy for, the, for whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Now, is this the blessing only for the Jews or is it for the uncircumcised Gentiles? Now, this is the part that he really brings out. He says, you know, we've been talking about Abraham, how he was counted as righteous by God because of his faith. How did it happen? Was he counted as righteous only after he was circumcised or was it before he was circumcised? Because the one part of obedience that Abraham could enter into a covenant was the circumcision of all the males. And he did that. But was that what made him righteous? And he's saying, of course not. Because God accepted Abraham before he was circumcised. He was counted as righteous. It wasn't dependent upon circumcision. And some of the Jews were getting hung up on that. They wanted all the Greeks that came in to make sure they got circumcised. Because that was a physical thing that would now identify them and, and make them holy. That's not what made him holy. And that was the sign that Abraham already had faith and that God had already accepted him and declared him righteous even before he was circumcised. So Abraham is the spiritual father of those who have faith but have not been circumcised. They are counted as righteous because of their faith. Abraham is a spiritual father of those who have been circumcised, but only if they have the same kind of faith that Abraham had before he was circumcised. He's going to great length to say Abraham's faith is what made him righteous. Not based on the law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. If God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith isn't necessary. And the promise is pointless. The law brings punishment. Now, Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though he was a hundred. I like this thing of Abraham, because Abraham was clear in his faith. Abraham never wavered, believing in God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. I want us to read that out loud together. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Now, I want you to say this. If you're able, I am fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Are you fully convinced of that? I am. Amen. I am fully convinced. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead here because I, I want to make sure we have plenty of time. Um, we're justified that the, the, the end of four goes on more about Abraham, but this first part of five ties in. Now, because of what faith has done, we're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and we have access by faith into this grace. Oh, man, that's powerful. We've been justified by faith, and we have access. Okay, so we do not draw back. There's no room for fear and unbelief. So what is my statement of faith? What are you able to, to enter into? There's something that happens when we speak our faith. When we publicly confess with our mouth. See, the Bible talks about that in, Ro uh, yeah, in Romans 10 verse 9, 10 and 11. But it talks about if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What is it about the mouth? There's something happens with confession 
of faith. See, what is your faith story? What's your confession? What do you believe? When did you believe? Speak faith. Do you know that I have found, I like to be around people that have faith. Because faith in Andy stirs faith in me. Faith in Tim. Faith in Clara. On everyone stirs something in me. I said, wow, yeah, I believe. Look at that. That's how come I love to read that John Lake book. I seen a stirring, a mighty move of God. Faith strengthens others. See, Paul spoke, and, and I'll quickly go through this story because I, I think it's such a beautiful example of what your faith does to others. God gave Paul the courage to believe. I mean, he had faith. But in his faith, he had boldness. God um, gave 276 men around him were safe because of of Paul. Remember, Paul had just been condemned and he was in these trials and he was being sent to Rome now. He was going to appear before Caesar and he was going to defend his faith in God. But they put him on a ship and Paul senses this, um, that... uh, this isn't going to go well. He senses it in the spirit. He's a, he, prophetically, he speaks to him. He says, guys, listen, you better just put the, this is too late in the year to sail. These waters aren't, da- aren't safe. You better just put her, tie her up. And so then they had a, a nice day and the, the, the owner of the ship and whatever the captain said, well, we'd like to be in another harbor. We think it's a little nicer than this one. And, da, da, da. and so they started sailing. And then they ran into a terrible storm. It says, we took such a, a violent battering from the storm. The next day they began to throw cargo overboard. By the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. And it says, now neither sun nor stars appeared for many days. The storm continued raging. We finally gave up all hope of being saved. After the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stands up and says, listen. (laughs) It's like this. Sometimes I do that if I'm right in something. And I, (laughs) hey, you should have listened. (laughs) Okay. Paul did a little bit of that. He says, if you'd have just listened to me, you wouldn't have to have you know, all this damage and loss. But now he says, I urge you, and this is what he says, I urge you to keep up your courage. They're in a terrible storm. This, they've been throwing stuff over. This is people's merchandise and whatever they're hauling, cargo. Not one of you will be lost. And he says, yeah, you know, only the ship is going to get destroyed. And that's all they're on is the ship. Because this is what he said. Last night, an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, spoke to me. He stood beside me and he said, don't be afraid. You're going to stand trial before Caesar and God has graciously given you the lives of all of these 276 men. So keep up courage, men, for I believe God. Now, it was a statement of faith. Can you imagine? He's a prisoner. The centurion's a captain of the guard. They're the Roman army. These are proud men. And this guy, somehow they've already seen the Spirit of God on him. They're starting to listen because he says, I believe God. And it will happen just as he told me. He said, nevertheless, we're going to run aground on some island now on the 14th night, we're still being driven across, across the Adirac Sea. About midnight, the sailors sensed they were approaching land. Fearing lest they would be run against rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern, prayed for day to come. The sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, and they were letting down the lifeboat. Okay, they only had one lifeboat. These guys are going to make their way to shore. This ship is going down. They were doing it under the pretense of putting out anchors. And so now, here's a step, (laughs) I like this, because Paul says to the soldiers and the centurion, listen, unless these men stay in the ship, you can't be saved. Boy, you know what? Now I see faith entering into these other guys. Now they're believing Paul. And so they cut the ropes. I mean, how wise is that to cut away the only lifeboat you got on the whole ship? And they cut the ropes and let the boat go. Well, day began to dawn Now Paul said, listen, it's the 14th day. Eat some food. You've eaten nothing before. I urge you to take nourishment, for this will be your survival. Since 
Notice what he says. Not a hair on your head will fall from the any of you. Wow. After he said this, he took some bread, gave thanks to God, ate it in front of them all. They were encouraged and ate. And in all, we were 276 people on the ship. And when they had eaten, they lightened the ship throughout the wheat and the sea. And when it was day, they didn't recognize the land, but they seen a bay with the beach. They cut the anchors, left them in the sea. Meanwhile, loosened the rudder ropes, they hoisted the mainsail and made for shore. But striking a place where the two seas met, they ran the ship aground. The prow stuck fast, remained unmovable, but the stern was being beaten up by the violence of the wave. It was a big storm, literally bashing and breaking the ship apart as it was stuck on the sandbar. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners lest any should swim and escape. The centurion said, wanting to save Paul, he kept them from their purpose and said, everyone who can swim should jump and get to land. And the rest, some on boards, some on parts of the ship, and so it was. They all escaped safely to land. All. Now, do you think they believed? Somehow speaking faith strengthens others. Paul spoke a word from God, changed the life. None of those 276 men were ever the same. They'd never forget what happened. Whether they come to faith or not, some of them, I believe, did. So there were 276, and no one, all of them were living. No one died. Now, this is what I want to do. We're going to start with this mic. I want you to, to just speak who you are, a, a statement of faith, not of feeling. See, if we go by feelings, then we kind of guard our statements. But if we, we speak by faith, we're able to say statements of faith. See, the word says, I'm chosen. He chose us in him. What is your statement of faith? What, maybe it's a, a journey you're on personally. Maybe it's saying, I'm a conqueror in this area. I am righteous because he gave me his righteousness. It's an I am statement of faith. But you say whatever God's, something you're facing. Maybe it's you want to declare you're a child of God. Whatever God gives you, you're welcome to share. Now again, there's not, it doesn't mean you can't pass the mic on without saying anything. But I'd love to hear this. We stopped early. We've got some time here. If I stop, <laughs> I'm capable and I am light. Okay, I'm victorious. Now, this is what I want you to do. Proclaim and speak your faith. What do you believe? Paul said, I believe God. As you speak your faith, it strengthens you and others. By the word of our mouth, by the confession of our lips. Okay? So, Michael and Viviana, we're going to start with the mic in the back, and then it's going to come right up here to Andy and Christina. We're going to do every other one. And Tim is going to referee. So now, Tim, he's going to, he's going to take charge of this part. So if, if two of you are starting to talk at the same time, Tim will say, okay, just...